So we're going to go ahead and start our unit on the electronic structure of atoms. So at the end of this lecture, students will be able to understand the nature of light and its relationship to electromagnetic radiation. You're also going to be able to explain the relationship between wavelength, frequency, and the speed of light. And of course, perform calculations using the C equals lambda times nu equation. By observing the absorbance and emittance of light um, by atoms, we have been able to come to an understanding uh, regarding the electronic structure of atoms. So in order to have a better understanding of the observations we've been able to make regarding the atom, we want to have an understanding of the nature of light. So we're going to go ahead and start with electromagnetic radiation. Um, electromagnetic radiation is sometimes referred to as radiant energy, um, and that's because this light is what carries energy through the vacuum of space. Um, and what needs to be known about uh, light traveling through a vacuum is that it travels at what's known as the speed of light. Okay, so that's going to be 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, electromagnetic radiation consists of various types of light. That includes visible light, radio waves, IR, X-rays, gamma rays, etc. Now, all of these forms of light all have what are known as wave-like characteristics. And wave-like characteristics consist of, one, um, they travel at the speed of light um, in a vacuum, as we've discussed. Um, two, that they repeat um, in periodic intervals. And lastly, they have both a wavelength and frequency associated with their wave structure. Now, wavelength is described as the distance between two consecutive peaks or troughs. Okay, so this would be considered a peak on this wave. This would be another peak. The distance between those two would be, of course, the wavelength. And wavelength is represented by lambda. Okay, now frequency is the number of waves that pass a specific point in a specific period of time, usually one second. And they are usually measured in something like hertz or inverse seconds. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now we've already discussed uh, wavelength, um, of course, being the distance between two peaks on a wave. Um, but I want to point out or give you a good visual of what frequency is um, pertaining to. So basically, remember that frequency is the number of waves that pass in a specific period of time. So um, if this is our, our measuring spot, we are going to count the number of waves that count pass that spot in that time period. Now, I want you to notice that the longer your wavelength, right, the shorter your corresponding frequency is going to be. So notice we have a long wave here, short frequency. Shorter wave, longer frequency. Even shorter wave, even longer frequency. Okay, so there's an inverse relationship between your frequency and wavelength. Of course, we've discussed that electromagnetic radiation consists of various types of light. Now, we've also talked about the fact that specific types of light have specific wavelengths and frequencies. And I want to use this electromagnetic spectrum chart here to show you um, how that corresponding frequency and wavelength applies to different types of light. Okay, so if we look here, we have the visible spectrum here. Okay, you have your wavelength. Um, and your frequency values um, in which those specific types of light fall. Um, in the same thing, if we go out here to microwaves, okay, there's definitely a wavelength range and a frequency range that corresponds to that type of light wave. Okay, so um, wavelength and frequency are going to dictate um, basically the type of wa light wave that you are actually looking at or discussing. So we know that frequency and wavelength are assigned to specific types of electromagnetic radiation. Um, we know that those are inversely proportional. We also know that all light travels at the same speed in a vacuum, which is the speed of light. Okay, and that allows us, these facts allow us to come up with this equation here, where we have our speed of light being proportional to the product of wavelength times frequency. Okay, and basically this interrelationship will allow us um, along with, obviously, the constant that we know here, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, um, it'll allow us to either calculate the frequency or the wavelength um, given that we know one or the other for a specific light wave. So let's go ahead and utilize our equation um, to basically calculate um, some wavelengths and, and frequencies. Okay, so first of all, we know that we're going to be using this equation. 
Okay, the reason why is because we've been provided a frequency, okay, of 5.89 times 10 to the fifth hertz. Okay, remember hertz means the same thing as inverse seconds, um, which can also be written as so. Okay, um, and they want us to find the wavelength. Okay, so we are going to manipulate this equation to solve for wavelength. Okay, so wavelength is going to equal C divided by nu. Okay, so our speed of our light divided by frequency. So we know that our speed of light is a constant, so 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Okay, you need to memorize that. And we're going to go ahead and plug in our speed of light on top. And we're going to go ahead and plug in our frequency down below. Okay, I'm going to write it in inverse seconds. Um, you can write it as hertz or s to the minus 1. It all means the same thing. Plug that into your calculator, and it should give you 5.09 times 10 to the second. Okay, units-wise, meters over seconds times um, the reciprocal of inverse seconds. That's going to give you meters. Okay, and this is your final answer for this problem. So I've taken my constant, and I've taken a given frequency and been able to figure out the corresponding wavelength for that light wave. Okay, we're going to go ahead and look at um, a different problem. In this case, we are solving for frequency. We're going to go ahead and use the same equation that we did before. Um, however, we've been provided a wavelength that is equal to 484 nanometers. Okay, so we want to know frequency. Okay, we know wavelength. And, of course, we know our constant that we've memorized for the speed of light. Okay, so we look at all of our values. We're going to take our equation and isolate the variable that we actually care about, which in this case is frequency. Um, and then before we plug in, we always want to be looking at our units. So in this context, I want you to notice that your wavelength has uh, its units in nanometers while uh, the speed of light is in meters. Okay, So we're going to need to change this into meters. So what's the relationship between nanometers and meters? Okay, so 484 nanometers, okay, our conversion factor is that there are 10 to the negative 9 meters for every 1 nanometer. Okay, and if you go ahead and multiply that out, you'll get 4.84 uh, times 10 to the negative 7th meters, right? So that unit evaluation, that helps us out. That is our new wavelength in meters. So we can go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by 4.84 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, sorry, negative seventh meters, okay? Um, and that will give us our frequency, give us 6.20 times 10 to the 14th, okay? Units wise, um, our meters and meters are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with inverse seconds, which is again the same as hertz. Right? And that is our final answer for our um, frequency of the blue light here. So we want to make sure we're paying attention to units. We want to make sure we're manipulating the equation and then plugging in our variables. And, of course, um, that we are memorizing our conversion factors between nanometers and meters. Now, there are some limitations to the wave model that we've just been discussing um, in terms of the behavior of light. And... Uh, the reality of it is, is there's specific behaviors um, that are not e able to be explained uh, with the simple equation and simple explanation that we've talked about in this lecture so far. So the three things that we're going to be discussing in, uh, in future lectures is the emission of light from hot body objects, or excuse me, hot objects, otherwise known as black body uh, radiation. Uh, we're going to explain that and look at uh, the basically work that was done by scientists to um, explain this phenomena. Same thing with the emission of uh, electrons uh, from metal surfaces. Um, basically this photoelectric effect, we're going to explain that and look at that. And then we're going to look at the emission of light from excited gas atoms. So basically the production of emission spectra. And the understanding of all of these uh, phenomena is, is what has really uh, solidified our understanding of basically um, the electronic structure and, and features of um, of atoms. And, and the amazing thing about uh, these experiments is this basic idea or this basic understanding that we just talked about in this lecture was expanded upon um, by some of the greatest minds um, that have existed on our planet. So 
we'll go ahead and take a look at those in our next few lectures.